seed. So I, I mean, they can strategize all they want. Uh, at the end of the day, the wars are won by uh, material conditions on the ground, and and that that's simply lacking in the West. Mm. Well, you know, speaking of the UK, there's an article out on the um, on RT.com, and this is the headline called "British Army Would Only Last Two Months Against Russia." Now, that's that's wishful thinking because they wouldn't. What is it? Is seventy some thousand people in the British Armed Forces? They can't fill up a stadium, and this is what the um, um, the, the article states: the military lacks ammo and equipment. The deputy chief of the defense staff has told MPs. The British armed forces are not prepared for a potential confrontation with an adversary such as Russia. The deputy chief of the UK defense staff, Lieutenant General Robert Megawan, told a parliamentary defense committee on Tuesday, the military severely lacks the resources, particularly ammunition for any such conflict, he believes. Now, I, I won't even go any further with that. Okay, if you won't last two months with Russia, because of Russia's and military industrial base, how long do you think you can last fighting a war with China with a huge, unmatched military industrial base? I mean, China just stopped shipping. China can just stop shipping goods to UK. <laughs> Britain's strength has always been its navy rather than its army. And, and look at the state of uh, a Royal Navy right now, their flagship, HMS Elizabeth, when was in port for repair and then he caught fire and and the, the, they're, they're they're not ready they're, these are not serious people uh and and then you have um oh 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 you know right after the obama visit uh david cameron for his foreign secretary or the foreign minister came out and said we are taking action against china we are finally going to sanction china for all these spy activity they're doing in britain Again, attacks on our democracy are unacceptable. Yet that is what organizations backed by China have done. Today, we are publicly calling them out and we've taken action. We've summoned the Chinese ambassador and we are putting sanctions, travel bans, asset freezes on the individuals and the group responsible. Such action from China will not be tolerated. We will always seek to defend ourselves from those that threaten our values and our democracy. And we encourage other countries to do the same. It's like, who the hell do you think you are? You, you, you are not a, you are not an imperial, you're not the great power anymore. You hasn't been since 1950 Suez Canal crisis. Mm -hmm. you, you, you are acting like you actually matters. I mean, the, the great politicians are jokes and they're talking about, we're defending our democracy. What democracy are you talking about? David Cameron, who elected you? Or, or who elected your boss, Sunak? You know, who elected him as a prime minister? And who elected you as foreign minister? <laughs> did, did the British people elect you? <laughs> How do you call that democracy then? It, it, this is bullshit. Victor Gao said, UK is not a competition or rival to China. China, China is a fact. It's a mega trend for UK to, to live with and get along with. <laughs> you are, you guys are no competition. You know, China leads in AI. China leads in technology. Where the hell is UK? Uh, UK yeah. is nowhere to be. Now, how Britain looks at China, it's up to the British government and people to decide. But I think it will be completely misguided for Britain to view China as an enemy or adversary or a competitor. What do China and Britain compete with? China is the largest manufacturer of automobiles competing with Britain? No. China is the largest exporter of EV cars and will lead the whole world in EV production. Is Britain a competitor? No. China will be the biggest and most important producer and R&D in terms of semiconductor in no time. Does that mean that China competes with Britain? No. China will be the leading nation in AI revolution. Is Britain a competitor? No. So I think British government should not overestimate its impact on the global scene and view Britain as a rival of China. China is not. China is a fact. China is a mega trend for Britain to live with and get along with. <laughs> well, Carl, look at this. this is, there's an article out on tomshardware.com. And to show you um, 
to cut through the U.S. propaganda on the Chinese, and we're going to cover a lot of things. But this is what uh, the title of the article is. China filed 25% more patents than the U.S. in 2023. Heavily sanctioned uh, Huawei led all companies worldwide despite bans. Now, think about that. America tried to stick it to Huawei. And Huawei bounces back and leads the world in, in patents. Now, if, if China has led the world in, in the issuing of patents, how can they be stealing technology from the West when they are the ones that are the leaders of the patents that are, or, or, you know, that are given to nations in their scientific breakthrough? Rashid, Rashid, the U.S. no longer, U.S. doesn't have 5G because Chinese stole it, okay? Because China has stolen the 5G technology. That's why U.S. doesn't have 5G. And, and this is for China graduate millions millions of engineer every year you know just go go look up uh, the, the statistics um from last year there's no competition there's no competition from 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 us is this why do they think they have a chance to keep china down china, one fifth of the humanity one in every five person on earth is chinese and and why can china enjoy better living conditions you know if when china even even if the chinese per capita per gdp reaches 25 percent of us in nominal dollar terms that means chinese economy is already bigger than you. when gina Raimondo says us will take whatever it takes to stop china's progress this is insane this is how 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 do you plan to do that this is uh they, they still think they can they can literally just dictate to the world but um China, united states doesn't have the resources in fact the research and development in us depends on foreign talents it depends on those chinese students coming into the us university to take up those research and development roles um it, it, they, they don't you know most most of the, i i went through the us uh, university system myself I and mean, the people who go to engineering are like either chinese or indians <laughs> exchange students they're not <laughs> the, 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 the people people are now going to lucrative careers like be a tiktok influencer you know be a youtuber <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> so call uh, on our screen here we see uh, that this says China leads the world in hypersonic technology. And this is from Bloomberg. This is not from some French, uh, Eastern, or, or, or um, Global South publication. This is actually from Bloomberg's, um, Bloomberg, Bloomberg.com. This in itself is an admission because think about the, the, the um, intricacies in hypersonic technology. The United States just tested one that they claimed was a success, but they didn't tell you that the uh the, it did not meet all of the parameters that they were looking for so it's still in in testing phase and, and but china has working hypersonic technology how can they be still in technology and they lead in patterns and they lead in hypersonic technology uh <laughs> i think a lot of people they're kind of their 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 mental picture of china is literally stuck in the last century you know, they still think of China in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. They don't realize China has moved into 21st century a long time ago. And and this is why um, when Americans do set foot in China, recently I saw a, a video of an American who traveled back to China after five years. And he was shocked. He was shocked. And he admitted that in many ways, China already is ahead of United States um, in in terms of um, in terms of not only living condition, but you know, in terms of technology, adoption of technology, mobile payments, um, and it's just a nice country to live in. And he said he said it saddened me to admit, but U.S. in the last five years has gone in the opposite direction. I'm going to tell you the seven major ways that China has changed in the past five years. I've been coming here on and off for 10 years and maybe a little bit more than that. And I have a lot of stories. I'll weave those stories into how the country has changed.
pre-COVID versus COVID. Number one is automation. Whether you're getting on a high-speed train or you're getting onto the subway, everything is, is automated, right? Through the use of personal identification cards and face recognition cameras. They've got everything set up. They've also got the Chinese equivalent of Apple Pay everywhere for everything. There is nothing that you want to do in this country that you cannot do um, without the Chinese equivalent of Apple Pay. Also, you go into the factories and there are robots everywhere. This is important because it's different from how we perceive China in the US. So in the US, we think of China as like a cheap labor country with um, them just throwing people at everything and them just being really cheap. But the reality is that they're automating and they're putting robots everywhere they can at the same time. That's a huge change from five years ago. Second big major change is electric vehicles. They're everywhere, much more than in the United States. So in the US, we have Tesla and then you see occasionally a few other brands, less than 10% of the cars on the road. In China, it's like 30 to 40% of the cars on the road are fully electric. And it's not just Tesla, Tesla is here, but there are dozens of other Chinese brands that you have never heard of that are selling cars as cheap as $10,000. Not like shit cars, you know, not like a tricycle, but like a full blown sedan for $10,000. And they're everywhere, very big deal. Number three, they fix their air. Part of it is the electrical vehicles, the electric vehicles, right? Because they're not putting as much exhaust into the air, but they fixed it in other ways. I'm in Shanghai right now. And 10 years ago, I remember arriving um, in the airport and you couldn't see from one side of the airport to the other side of the airport because there was actually smog inside the building. The air is not perfect. Um, in China, especially when you go more inland into the country, okay, there's a, it's still a little smoggy and then also like, but it's significantly better. It, it's kind of an amazing point because we think of, again, in the US, we think of China as this smog filled country with no environmental regulations or anything like that. They fix the air. Four, this one in particular absolutely blew my mind. Five years ago, this country was not civilized. What do I mean by that? People bump into you, people cut lines, people spit on your feet, they do an open mouth cough into your face, they piss in random places, they just drive like fucking maniacs. It's different now. People are civilized. I'm in China. I feel like I'm in Japan now. Okay, so like all the stereotypes of Japan where, where people are like polite and the service is excellent. That's what it feels like in the major cities in particular in China now. That's amazing. I used to shit my pants all the time in China because there were no public bathrooms. And when you finally did find a bathroom that was public or accessible to the public, right? There was never any toilet paper in it. That has changed as well not sure how they've made a more civilized society there were 10 years ago five years ago posters all over the place that kind of encouraged people to be more civilized which is interesting right that's not really something that you see in the u.s they seem to have made the country significantly more civilized in a bunch of different ways so one that automation that i was talking about earlier in the video is a big deal I don't know how many years ago, let's call it five, six years ago, probably five years ago, I showed up in a smaller town in, let's say the suburbs of China, and I got off the high-speed train, so they had the high-speed infrastructure back then, and I tried to hail a cab, a taxi, and three men who drove taxis kind of like approached me, and they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't run the meters in this town. So the taxi meters that you see, if you like get a taxi in New York or whatever, they refused to, to run them because the taxi drivers figured that if they could all coordinate and cooperate, they could make more money. That kind of stuff has gone down in part through the ubiquitous automation, right? Because now I can pay every taxi, every 
Chinese equivalent Uber. I can pay all that stuff with my phone. Um, so propaganda, automation, and then also people tell me that like the government uses a lot of KPIs in order to improve the quality of the services. So anytime you have a problem, you can call a phone number and they'll um, not only try to solve that problem for you, but they'll follow up weeks later trying to verify whether or not it was truly solved. That to me is kind of mind blowing because it's, it's one thing to throw up high speed rail, train stations, build these amazing buildings and all that as, they, as they've done for the past 30 years. But to change the culture, that's much more difficult. But they did it. Someone just approached me randomly on the street, like, how are you, where are you from? And then when I replied in Chinese, they kind of just backed off. So like, things are not perfect. They Once they figured out that I speak Chinese, they're like, okay, I can't really scam this person, however they're gonna scam me. I, major change five years ago versus today. Way fewer foreigners. I'm probably in the place that has more foreigners than right now. Like literally, I'm, I'm in the Shanghai equivalent of Times Square and there are more foreigners here. Look, look at the fucking sky, okay? Like they fixed the air, they fixed it. There are more foreigners here than any other place and there just aren't that many foreigners. Um, there's one in front of me, but there just aren't that many. There used to be many more foreigners in China. That's one big major change. Uh, I don't totally know what's going on there. Part of it could have been the lockdowns in the past couple of years. Another part of it could be the perception of China that you get in foreign countries. I, that's turned negative in this country. But the foreigners are few. The ones who look like me are disproportionately Russian. So a lot of the white people you see in Russia, you look at them, they look a little different. They look like they're Russian and you can verify that when you hear them speak. That's a big change from five years ago. Six, the kind of technology and the supply chain and the way of doing business has changed tremendously. I visited, I don't know, eight different factories. Factories are doing, factories are opening their own e-commerce stores and plugging in directly into the Chinese equivalent of TikTok and the Chinese equivalent of Amazon. And the factories are super automated and like, it's, it's not just like the technology, but like the speed of business and the way business works feels significantly more advanced in China than it does in the United States. And it didn't necessarily feel that way five years ago. The last thing I would say, the seventh and final point five years ago versus today, is that my perception before I came here and the perception generally of Americans of China is that the place got worse, that it was some sort of like dystopian, terrorized world where you can't do anything and there were lockdowns and all that. And that's not true. And on top of that, it just, I'm shell shocked. Like I'm actually blown away because in general, this country feels like, for lack of a better word, a Japanified, version of China. It just feels like I'm stepping into the future. It feels like everything has gotten better over the past five years in this country. It is a more harmonious society. I think the blips on that, the kind of things on the graph where that wasn't really happening and not true over the past five years, were COVID lockdowns. But in general, everything here is better. So what do I mean in terms of what has changed in the past five years versus today? It just feels like in my home country, over the same five years, everything got worse. And that is the most powerful, jarring revelation. So that guy was trying to sell me like purses and watches, everything. Okay, so again, 
things are not perfect here by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not like that doesn't happen in New York either, obviously, right? And I'm in a tourist area in Shanghai. The guy was just trying to sell me watches, probably counterfeit. But it just feels in general that everything in my home country got worse. And that's brutal. It's brutal to think about that. So I don't know, you can interpret this information however you feel like you want to. But the reason why I think this is so important is that countries change and they're on different trajectories. And I don't know what the trajectory of China will be over the next five years. I don't know what the trajectory of the United States or other countries will be over the next five years. But it is very jarring and very powerful to feel how different and how much better this country is five years later and how much worse my home country feels over the same five years. It's a mess. And that's the powerful lesson to you. Thank you for watching. Bye. I'm, I mean, for the people who are familiar with both countries, that's just obvious. This, this, is, this has been a fact for, for a while right now. But, but with politicians like Joe Biden and uh, Pelosi, do you think these guys really know what's going on in the world? I mean, that, I mean Pelosi can be very good at stock picking. But I don't think I don't think she has bandwidth for anything else right now. I mean, <laughs> she got so good at invest investing, uh, she doesn't have time to devote to other other arenas of, of expertise. Uh, oh my God! Oh, Carl, I tell you what, Carl, you know you can keep it left. This question is for you, Carl. I mean, this this statement is for you. You can answer that. <laughs> I mean, let let's just face it. Both Russia and China leads United States in the in the hypersonic mi missiles technology. Well, I I I think Russia, um, Russia at some point they they still lead China in like things like jet engines, uh, mm -hmm. but that's already changing because China is catching up. Um, uh, one of the one of the thing with Russia is they inherited a lot of the uh, advanced infrastructure from. From the former Soviet Union, but the, uh, during after the Soviet collapse, a lot of the kind of the Soviet infrastructure, even including the military industrial complex infrastructure, were kind of left crumbling. So, so, so you are so Russia in the last ten years was trying to like just like repairing the damage um, that that occurred after the collapse of the Soviet Union. You, Russia is still making steady progress. But they they kind of they got hampered. They got hampered in that, uh, especially in the last decade of 1990s when Yeltsin was in power. I mean that 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 that's when the whole Soviet legacy of industrial production got hollowed out, and and all the equipment were sold abroad. Um, so 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 at, uh, in the meantime, what happened in China since 1980s? There was steady progress. So I think Russia and China. In terms of missile technologies, they're about like they're they're on par right now, but they're both much ahead of U.S. Much, much, much more ahead of U.S. And um, and, and I was as you, you, as you were talking, I, I was looking at something to throw in with you. It says that China has nearly five million graduates in engineering, um, surpassing India or any other nation, and it says that Russia has the highest number of engineers in the world, but China has the highest graduate. So year in and year out, they're turning over uh, engineers like, like none other. So isn't it ironic that the two leaders of the BRICS are building their engineer corps while America is trying to wage war and, and using more and more debt to do that, which, which will up in her, um, her um, rule because that is unsustainable. Yeah, I mean, Soviet Union had always been uh, very good at putting investment into industry education. I mean, after the Cold War, U.S. actually benefited from the influx of former Soviet educated engineers who are now seeking jobs in the West. I, I knew this because I work in the software industry. You know, you're <laughs> my colleague are either from so former Soviet Union, from China, or from India. <laughs> I mean, that's just a fact. And, 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 but right now, with the internal conditions in Russia improving, 
you know, these the, the, the new generations of Russians, Russian trained engineers are not leaving like like their previous generations. They're, they're staying in their country and developing their country. And and, 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 and Russia and, and China has a, 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 a they have synergy because their, their economy is complementary. You know, there is much less dependency on the West. Well, there's little dependency on the West in Russia right now because it got cut off. So 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 now the, the rest of the world is powering forward while U.S. is trying to build a wall around itself and mm -hmm. its little vassal states in Europe. So what what I see will happen in the future is, you know, the, the, technologically, uh, the BRICS countries leading by Russia and China will continue forward while, while the West will stagnate and, continue, and fall behind. And, 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 you know, we already seen that in a lot of arenas, um, you know, like, like a sustainable energy development, you know, China leads in solar, wind power, hydro production, China leads in um, EV production, China leads in robotics. Now, now China is providing stiff competition to the Japanese robotic companies. Uh, and and they're, 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 they're proving stiff competition for German automakers. And and I don't even know what U.S. have to compete with at this point. I was and I was also looking down in the same um, article, and it says that China and India graduate twelve times <laughs> more engineers than the United States. And on top of it, let us not forget that China has set up some academies across Africa to promote engineering. So let us not forget that while we're talking about this. What say you on this matter? Yeah, I mean, United States is lucky in that that India hasn't completely gotten its housing order. So the Indian trained engineers continually come to U.S. to power the U.S. multinationals, and that's that's one of the things that's sustaining the U.S. economy right now. You know, all these foreign talent talents coming to U.S. You know, formerly. It's, Indian Chinese, but now the U.S. government is putting the putting the screws on all the Chinese engineers and researchers. So, so and 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 China is developing. So, all, you know, the Chinese engineers they have better options. They have better options at home. Um, whereas, you know, Indian engineers at this point are still choosing to come to U.S. because they, you know, can f have a better lifestyle. Uh, uh, so, so that's that's what's keeping U.S still what's uh, keeping the u.s going right now i mean u.s still lead in certain area of technology like chat gpt um but this again is kind of the the, the difference between u.s and focus of u.s and chinese mm. economy and there's a difference uh between u.s and china u.s is more focused on the surface service sector right now this is why u.s still have a uh, have an edge in stuff like chat gpt because you know us is very good at producing word salad they're very good at producing marketing uh, uh ads advertisement uh, and, and this is why uh you know chat gpt has a lot of data pool to work with and also plus the english language is still you know the dominant uh trading language around the world so that they have that slight advantage over china whereas you see where china leads they're leading in robotics, in automated manufacturing, like all the things that produce stuff, because that's what China excels in. China excels in, in making hard, concrete uh, object, whereas the U.S. is excelling, more excelling in <laughs> talking. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so, so this is why, you know, when it comes to AI, you see the clear differentiation, you know, U.S. leading chat GPT. And 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 you and, and China leading in in robotics and automated manufacturing. I mean, I mean, people have such outdated uh, thinking about China that they think China is still like sweatshop uh, slave labor that's producing cheap shoes for for U.S. Just go to like any car factory in, in China. All the car the car factory floors are automated. They have like machines and robots making the cars. Whereas in U.S., you still see like people physically bolting the door on, on the car. So it's, it's, this is like, and, and they think that somehow China is still like behind U.S. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's just, again, there's a lot of ignorance in U.S. that's 
been sustained by the constant stream of propaganda. Um, so that's one area U.S. clear lead. You know, the propaganda production, the copium production is off the off the charts. You, 